me feeling like you're reading like a spicy funny little romance book and so obviously because i can't do anything with moderation i decided to dedicate a full week of my life to reading romance books now i have seven boyfriends i don't know which one is my favorite i don't know their names i gonna have a love-hate relationship with romance books it's really hard for me to make it a five stars i do enjoy them i do dabble with them from time to time but a five star read is crazy so this should be interesting let's go so first book we're tackling is Twice Shy by Sarah Google. I'm obsessed with You Deserve Each Other by her. This book is about these two people that unexpectedly inherit this house. Neither of them was expecting the other person to be there and neither of them wants to give it up. You know the vibes. I've actually already started it and I'm about halfway through. Thus far, my thoughts are average, even a little bit below average. At the beginning, it got me because it's a little enemies to lovers and I really felt the hatred in the enemies to lovers, which sometimes I just feel like is not there at all. And I'm like, I'm supposed to believe this hatred comes out of where exactly? You lost me a little bit in the middle, but now it, it has me again. So who knows how I'll feel at the end of this book, but I just feel like so far I'm a bit weary because it's not consistently good. I don't even know if this is considered slow burn because <laughs> what we're getting are not even breadcrumbs. They're like bacteria. I don't even know. I'm fired. Oh my gosh, it's 1 a.m. Okay. Chapter 14. I may or may not read it before going to bed, but then that's it. No, I'm going to bed right now. I have therapy in the morning. <laughs> the night. I'm about 70% in and it's getting so good. I don't know what's going on because I was bored and scared for a minute there. I finished this book yesterday. The story is about Mabel. Seemingly out of nowhere, she gets the news that her great aunt has died and that she left her her house. To get that house is just like such a special lucky thing for her to have, right? Wrong. <laughs> She gets to the house and there's someone else there that has also inherited the house. His name is Wesley. He like took care of the great aunt and now they are forced to live together because neither of them wants to give up the house. It's very much an enemies, two friends, two lovers, watch proximity, but like it's not that much of a big thing here because well, just read the book if you want to know. I would read this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It wasn't consistently good enough. I feel like a good book just kind of grasps you from beginning to end. The main character is kind of a daydreamer. At the beginning, I felt like that was too much. I loved Wesley. I've just never read a guy like this in a book before. So I guess now it's time to choose the next book. I have a few options, but I think we're gonna tackle Terms and Conditions. It's the second book of the Dreamland Billionaire series. I read the first book, The Fine Print. It's about different people and you can read them as standalones. The reason why I'm choosing this one is because it's so thick. It's 400 pages, almost 500. And if I don't get to it now, I won't get to it ever. Basically, it's like billionaire that owns a Disneyland, but like fictional, has passed away. And he leaves to his three grandsons like a position in this company. But to access each of their thing, they need to do little claws that their grandfather has left them. And this one, it's to get married. And since he's apparently an asshole, no one wants to bear him until someone does. And it's his assistant. Oh! Oh, they need to have a baby as well. Anyway, so this should be interesting. I'm at page 39 and I don't think this book is gonna be for me because I'm already thinking something that I thought of when I read the first book, which is Kyle is so sweet and adorable and I wanna read just his life. And he's like a side character, was even less relevant in the first book, but I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> you guys, I'm at page 108 and I'm obsessed. 
or I'm getting obsessed. I can feel it in my bones. And I was not expecting that. One of the best feelings in the entire world is being surprised by a book. And I'm so pleasantly surprised by this book. It's crazy. First of all, okay, so many things to say. First of all, I wasn't expecting from like the first book, their relationship to be like this. I feel like I remember them being closer and more like loving than this. But it's a marriage of convenience, like not between two friends. It's between two people who know each other, who work well with each other and have a good relationship in that way. But that's about it. So it makes things quite interesting. And it's also fun to have, like, obviously you don't have to read the first book, but to know how your relationship appeared to like people close to them and then what they think of each other when they're together so good i'm not the biggest fan of grumpy sunshine at all and this man is kind of grumpy Declan. and for some reason it's working out for me i'm eating it up like he's growing on me in the beginning i was like what the fuck is his problem like you think you're all that i think it's like in the last two pages that i was like oh my god what is going on I feel for him, I understand what's, oh, I don't even know what to say. And I also forgot how Lauren Asher's writing was. It's so easy to understand, it's funny, it's digestible, it flows. So even though this book is very thick, it's just so digestible because her writing is just so good to me. And it's just funny, like I'm having so much fun. Oh, <laughs> it's just, I'm so happy. I think women's books are like good for my mental health. Oh wait, let me try to find a page that I thought was so fucking funny. Okay, he said, you're a pain in my ass. No. <laughs> and then she responds, nope, that's just the same old stick acting up again. I read this last night and like almost, <laughs> I was in tears. It's just full of little moments like that. I love their banter. So good things thus far. I'm like 25% in. Almost. I wasn't gonna say anything, but it's like the third time she uses this expression to say that they want to do something a lot or, or consider doing something a lot. The author uses the expression, writes me hard. <laughs> I'm literally unwell. Like the first time I was like, okay, that's a bit strange. Second time I was like, okay, this is weird. And the third time I was just like, enough, enough. That's so silly. Ugh. So things are getting juicy. I cannot control the sun, I've tried. I'm at page 293, so I'm about 67% in. I really think I'm gonna finish this today. Actually, I won't let myself not finish it. For a little while since we last spoke, I was a bit worried that like Declan, the main guy, was gonna like, let me down just because he's such a grumpy, kind of I don't trust anyone character. And they tend to be kind of mean. So I was like, you know when a character gets in an enemies to lovers specifically, or Grumpy Sunshine specifically gets too mean. It's like, how are we ever gonna fucking recover from this? Like, I'm never gonna forgive you. The main girl might for the sake of this book, but I will never forget. I will always remember it all too well. Anyways, I'm gonna stop doing that because I look stupid. I was a bit worried, but things are getting... <laughs> It's such a slow burn, but it it's okay. Like, I heard online like great things about Iris, the main girl. In the beginning, I was like, okay, I don't feel any kind of way towards any of the character. Then obviously I started becoming obsessed with Declan and I was like, whoop. But now I'm at the point of the book where I'm like, okay, I get it. Iris is a bad bleep. She's so iconic. One thing though, I kind of need more descriptions of their physical appearances because right now, like, I kind of have an idea of what Declan looks like, but Iris, like, I'm having such a hard time picturing what she looks like. Very random. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm literally on the verge of tears and not the good ones. <laughs> I'm literally shook and this is what I have left. Sob. I love Cal. Like he's my favorite. First book, I was like already waiting for his book. This just solidified. He's perfect. And I look. I love Cal. Did I ever? <laughs> Did I already say that? He's such a sweet boy. See, I'm not that much into the grumpy man. Although that one did grow me. But Cal, he's just a sweetie pie. <laughs> That's funny though. Okay, when did the writing turns into the freaking... This is how I know I'm actually a villain because he said I'm miserable without you and actually smiled. <laughs> it's the last day.
I forgot to vlog yesterday and I'm sorry, but I finished Terms and Conditions and my life is forever changed. I rated it 4.5 stars. Declan the main guy, his grandfather was like Walt Disney, but fictional. And when he died, he left him an inheritance and to access his position, his money, everything that he wanted, he had to get married and have a child. That's not an easy thing for him because he is quite literally the grumpiest, the coldest, the most work focused man ever. So his assistant, that's basically like his right hand man, she does everything for him. Like they work together, they're a team. It's recruiting woman basically for him to marry. And he scares every single one of them off. Like he's just so fucking horrible. He scares everyone away. They have no options then the assistant Iris is like, I'm just gonna do it. I kind of had like a preconception of what their relationship was gonna look like before everything happened. And this like kind of just shattered that. They were like, you thought it was this, but truly it's this. Honestly, just the evolution and the development of their relationship was so good. Like I don't even know when they went from friends to this. Uh-uh. That's right, you know the song, if you don't. That's embarrassing for you. I was reading, I was like, I don't even know when I stopped feeling like these two were not meant together and this was all fake. And when I started rooting for them and like literally being in love with both of them, the characters, I thought they were both great. I loved their relationship. I loved the tension, the banter. I loved everything about it. Honestly, it's a five stars read. I don't even care. Now for the next and final book, I did start it yesterday I didn't completely let you down. My Killer Vacation. Honestly, I know Tessa Bailey, like she wrote, um, it happened one summer, and like something, with a hook and a fish, whatever. Popular books that people just overall really love. And I know this one wasn't loved as much, but I honestly don't care. I feel like my expectations are slightly lowered. I feel like it's just gonna be a fun, silly book. I think it's a romance murder mystery. I told my brother that's what I was reading and he literally laughed at me. He was like, you can't have a romance with a murder mystery. Like that's so delusional. And I was like, yes, you can. Sometimes delusions are what keeps you alive. So I did start reading it. I'm like only like at page 13. All I can say so far is that I really like her writing. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it on this last day of the challenge, but I'll try my best. Okay, we reached the end. We read these two books and we started this one. Twice Shy is an enemies to lovers forced proximity. They both inherit this house. Things I really love about this book I don't remember what I read in this book. Wait, I lost like all of my thoughts. I read, I read this a 2.5 stars, but honestly, it wasn't even that bad. I think it's just like the reading experience for me wasn't that great. I really loved the main guy. There were some really good and sweet and funny moments. I just feel like for me, this book wasn't consistently good. I'm gonna round it up to three stars because 2.5 stars is harsh. I literally had no hope for this book. I read it only to get rid of it because it was so big, but it ended up actually slaying. I'm rating it a five stars. I don't even care. Declan, he accessed his inheritance. And he needs to get married and have a child. He is just not ready to do that. And so his assistant proposes herself for the job. She volunteers as tribute. She really says, I volunteer, I volunteer as tribute. I just really loved the characters. I love the evolution, I love the tension, I love the vent. It just made me feel things, and that's what you want. And it was almost 500 pages, but it was honestly easier to go through than Twice Shy. My Killer Vacation, I didn't finish this book. I would like to do this video again when I have just more time in my life. I feel like I could get to so many more books. I think my prediction though for this book, the rating, I think it's gonna be like a three stars. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I had so much fun doing this video. Take care of yourself and we'll see each other in the next one. Hopefully, possibly, maybe. Okay, let's, I'm gonna have more confidence in myself. We'll see each other in the next one.